I'm at Studio DeBeld and I work here from time to time with Joel DeBeld. Working here you get to use high-end tools like this Fest tool. This is a sliding compound miter saw. It's a KS120 EB and having used this and then using my drop saw at home, my sliding compound miter saw at home, which is a Triton brand, it's probably the low end, um, you can see a massive difference and you can then really feel the joy of using a tool like this. Now this thing, the accuracy, um, the quality of the build, all those sorts of things add up to having a very, very good, long-lasting um, tool that you can rely on. Very important in a place like a, a woodworking shop. Um, but can I get a better result using out of my crappy saw? Can I fix it? Can I do some things to it to get some something like a, a Festool type cut? Hey Joel. Hey. So you got this Festool this sliding compound miter saw here, I'm a real yeah. admirer of it. Yep. What can you tell me about it that makes this saw such a good thing to have in your professional workshop? Well, for me, it's the dependability. Um, so I've had this for over 10 years. We just had a look at the plate, it's 2007. Uh, and I bought it like when they first came to the market. Now, you can probably get this, these days you can probably get a, you know similar functions in a saw with your you know your adjustment your tilt angle left and right and and your, your various compound cutting abilities um, but the thing that I love about it is its accuracy so there's there's sort of there's no sort of arbor wobble it's just I can hit my mark every time you know provided the blades sharp yeah it's just it's never missed a beat it's yeah. just the that's why I rate products like Festool. So it's it's robust. Robust, it's heavy duty, robust. Look, it has had use and abuse like pretty yeah. much every day for yeah. what's that, 13, 14 years. Yeah. So great tool. Yep. No, I I've used it a couple of times and I'm ruined now. My saw ruined. at home, I'm ruined. Exactly. Having used this thing here, um, I've been coveting it. It's it's a wonderful tool. So let's see if I can fix up my saw at home, my crappy Triton compound miter saw see if I can get something close and I'll get Joel to rate it for me when I'm done and if, see if he'll uh, see if he'll give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks Joel. No worries. Come on old girl, in you come. A little bit of loving and attention won't hurt you. Oh. Let's have a little chat about this saw here. This is my sliding compound miter saw. Uh, I bought this from my stepfather uh, from his estate when he passed away back in 2013, sadly. Uh, I'm grateful that I got it. Now, uh, it's a Triton saw, 12 inch blade. I think that's 355 millimeters, something like that. Now, it, um, it's a basic saw. and I think my stepfather paid around about $350 back in 2013 for it. It's left outside most of the time under an awning, but it's exposed to moisture. So there's corrosion on this. I wanted to mention that from the outset. So don't hold that against the saw. That's more my fault. Um, it's been, in terms of its sawing action, it cuts really well, kind of like an axe with a, with a, um, on a log, you know. Uh, no, it actually goes through. It cuts no worries, but there's a fair bit of float in the blade, arbor float. So if you, if you mark a line, you're trying to cut along that line, it's a little bit hit and miss. I'll see if I can show you what I mean. So look at the next thing here, this is the height stop. Now, if I wanted to do a half cut, let me just take the power off this thing and unplug it. Power's off. Okay, just so you know, being safe. So this, if I wanted to do a half cut and I just need to adjust the blade so I can use this and it comes down, but just notice how much this bounces. Can you see the spring in the stop itself? The amount of flex in the rest of the structure, even when I do hit the stop, here and I'm still pulling a little bit um, the blade was still going down 
So meaning that it's going to go deeper unless you've got a real precise amount of pressure and you have to be consistent. The flex in this saw is going to give you an inconsistency in its depth cut. I wanted to tilt the saw. Underneath there's a little lever. So you would need to just undo this one here. I've rarely done that and then it, it'll tilt over to there's 15 degrees, there's 30 and there's 45. The action's pretty smooth so that's okay. That's crumbled and fallen apart and it's just a sticker that's been exposed to the sun and it's just stuffed. A really important thing to consider is when you're looking at one of these saws here is how it's set up in terms of its, its sliding arms. These are set up at the back and there's protrusion out there that you have to find shop space to be able to accommodate that or dig a hole in your wall and have that sticking out the back somehow. The more recent versions of this have these arms sticking out the front, much like the Festool. And that saves them so much space, you can basically have the saw stopping up against the wall just there. How you tilt the base here, there's a, there's a knob at the front. Just undo that and that allows it to swivel. And this one here is very stiff and it needs cleaning up, but it does swivel. And it's got detents in there, so it goes to a natural detent. So it'll stop like on zero degrees. I don't trust it. <laughs> and then you just do up the knob again by twisting. It's like a screw, friction screw, and that holds that firm. So for what it is, and the amount of money I paid for it, this thing has served its purpose very well. Um, however, as much as I love that best tool, I can't afford that just yet. This saw, I will just do some work, tidy it up, and give it some more service life. I think it deserves it. Another thing I need to address is this blade is very dirty, meaning it's got a lot of gumming on it, which chokes it, okay? But the blade is very fairly new, actually. It's sharp. Um, I just need to give it a clean, so I'll do that as well. I'm using a Diablo blade, it's a good quality blade, costs a lot of money, just need to give it a scrub. Going to put the blade back on, but before I do, I just want to point out the gumming. I've cut through a lot of pine studding with this saw here, and in there, in between the teeth, there's all this gumming, and over the sides of the teeth as well. It's like a residue, so that doesn't help the, uh, the action of the blade going through the timbers to get a nice clean cut. It's got a bucket here and some Alkaline, I think it is, just some degreaser, some car degreaser. This spray bottle probably is not even going to work. Anyway, get your spray bottle and spray on some degreaser. Beautiful. Removed all that resin. Let's put it on and see how much wobble it's got. got a bit in there and that's a lot that's a lot of play at this stage I just need to make an important point that um, I'm just pulling things apart here trying to solve the problem of the end float and that shaft the arbor float I don't recommend doing this this is something that uh, I just want to let you know from the outset here I'm just showing you what I'm doing uh, as part of the discovery process, I end up shimming the, the, the plate out. That's something I don't recommend because you're changing the de design of the machine. You don't know what's worn behind there, whether it's a bearing or a housing that's a uh, cactus. So I'm recommending that you don't do this. I mean, the armature won't come out and this drive shaft won't come out that way despite the flange being loosened, I suspect there's a bearing or something like that. So I'm not sure what's that I can undo to get at that sloppy joint that's right there. I'm a bit of a standstill. And what I'm thinking, this is my cunning plan, is uh, perhaps if I shim this out, 
like I've got nearly a whole millimetre there. If I shim that out as much as I possibly can. Problem is, what I don't like about that is that you've, you've got a, um, a bevel gear inside there and then you're changing the, the meshing of the gears when in this shaft. Okay, so I've got these ones now. To make it uh, more obvious, I'm using the dial indicator again. Let's just go around. So about 37.37. I reckon I've got that arbor float as best I'm going to be able to get it. Uh, probably the next thing I'll look at is the uh, the depth stop and uh, see if I can get rid of that flex in there because that's really annoying. And then I can get under the cleaning of the, the rest of this beast. But it's still it's a wobbly thing. I look at, I look at that blade and I go, nah. Well, that's much less spring. Still a lot of flex in the head. Still super sucky, but we'll move on to the next thing. In trying to get that pivot stud out, which is still jammed and I've got it soaking, I've just discovered this crack in the uh, in the base housing through there, so it's fairly significant. It's not a little deal, it's gone right through that web. And uh, again, we talk about quality of build and uh, build to a price, these sorts of things can be expected, unfortunately. So if you're moving, expecting to uh, to move something around a job site from A to B all the time, pick this thing up, chuck it in the back of the car or the truck or whatever you whatever you have, then the light duty stuff has got a less of a chance for survival than the the well made heavy duty gear. So after seeing the crack, just really makes you think about junking it. I mean, there's so many problems with it uh, in the first place, and uh... oh. oh. What a mess. Well, at this point here, I wanted to summarize where we are and make a few points here. Uh, first one is, this is a, a, a cheap tool, okay, low end, built light for the home handyman. So first thing, need to be realistic about what this tool can offer. What I discovered was that this tool here is, uh, because of its lightness in, in its structure, there's a lot of flexibility and that flexibility leads to inaccuracy of, of the cuts. The other thing too was the wear in the in the arbor or that float in the arbor for the blade and the wobble in the blade. So these couplings that hold the blade, there's two things. There's the float in the shaft and then there's the inaccuracy in the machining of these two that hold the blade. So you try to spin the blade to, to a different position and move these in different positions, 45, 90 degrees, whichever, to try and get out that wobble in that blade. And you saw me with the dial indicator trying to get that wobble out. So what you're starting with, the foundations of your tool are, it's a weak structure, flex, yeah, it's very flexible, 
and those aren't the things that you need. There's a reason why tools cost so much, like the high end, like the Fest tool is $2,000. Um, this is $300. The research and development, the engineering and the quality of materials all adds up to a to high end price that will last you a lifetime. As opposed to this thing that's lasted seven years and it's, it's now dead. I don't want to use it. I'm not going to use this. That crack in that housing, it becomes to a point where it's dangerous, that float. Um, I'm looking for more I'm looking for more accuracy in my work and, and I don't think this machine is, is something that is worth pursuing, putting more time into it um, to try and achieve that. So I've answered my question, can I fix a machine to get that high end um, accurate results? Yes, in a very limited fashion, So, but it's a law of diminishing returns. I don't recommend shimming out the, the, um, the shaft to eliminate that upper float because you're changing the design characteristics. You don't know what's worn behind the scenes there, if it's a bearing problem, if it's about to disintegrate. So um, I'm going to recommend that you don't do that. I hope that answers the question. I hope it provides some education. When you're looking for your saw or tools, look at that rigid structure, look at the float and the blade, uh, make sure it's going to deliver to you what you think you need from it. If you're a home handyman, just want to chop a bit of wood, that's fine, get the cheaper end. If you're looking at getting into cabinet work and need that accuracy, you probably need to be considering the structure and its rigidity. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Oh, Joel. Hey. Now we're so this is, uh, hang on, we were just talking about the saw a little bit earlier. Oh, this is I it. was going to get you to give me a bit this of a... This is it. What do you mean this is it? What are you laughing at? Now, the question I've got for you is, mm. do you take trade-ins? Yeah, I do. Oh yeah? Yeah. What, what's the go? Well, I, I'll take it off your hands if you purchase at full price. <laughs> <laughs> so, can I use your bin? You can use my bin, so there, there is your trade-in deal. That's a pretty good deal, actually. I like it. So do the tipping, tipping fee. Done deal. <laughs> <laughs>